You know, people often ask me, what's the difference between a Belgian Malinois and a German Shepherd? And, um, you know, in many cases there's not much of a difference, but in some cases there are a huge difference. And it really depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a working dog, you know, there's differences. If you're looking for a family dog, there's differences. And you can find individuals within both breeds that will, you know, suit what it is that you're looking for. Now, I have two six-month-old puppies here. And, um, you know, you can see I've got a female Malois and a male German Shepherd. And, um, and I've owned many German Shepherds and I've owned many Malois because it's the business that I'm in. Um, so I have a very good idea. I've trained many of them. I've done bite work with many of them. Uh, you know, I've tracked. I've done, you know, a lot of work with a lot with a lot of shepherds and a lot of Malinois. Enough to get a good idea as to what the difference is. So this isn't going to be one of those videos, you know, of somebody who got one pet and now all of a sudden they're an expert on the topic, or they got one dog that they they take to the to the. The, the 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 dog club once a week and now all of a sudden they're an aficionado um this is this is based on a lot of experience so in short you're going to get generally <clears throat> more intensity you're going to get generally more intensity with the malwas but you're also going to get more neurotic behavior you know and they've actually done you know studies on 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 belgian malwas and they've studied their you know genetic makeup and they've found that there's a gene in all Belgian Malinois that, that, that work well, and it's a gene for neurotic behavior. Now that gene does not exist in the, apparently in the show dogs, right? So the Belgian Malinois, some, yes, I know, it's, it's unbelievable to me too, but there are some people that actually breed these dogs for show, for, for AKC shows or CKC shows, and, and these dogs don't have that neurosis gene. So they're no good for work, and they're not really a real Belgian Malinois, but, you know, they look pretty. And, and, and I've seen a lot of them. They tend to be shy and a little bit insecure, and they're just not not good family dogs and, and definitely useless for work. So in my, my I would never recommend those dogs. Now, the Belgian Malinois, they have this gene for neurosis, and you can see it often, right? Like in, in the way that it manifests with the dogs, um, you know, Really, it's it's very, and you could you could you could ask, hey, why in the hell would anyone want to breed neuroses into a dog? Well, think about it. A lot of the tasks that they need to do, um, you know, being neurotic really helps. You know, it's like I gotta find the drugs. I gotta find the drugs. I gotta find the drugs. I gotta spend eight hours every day looking for drugs. Okay, well, their neuroses is gonna help if you channel it and and point it in the right direction. You know. Um, you know, whether it's a competition obedience dog, hey boys, girls, calm down. If it's a competition obedience dog, right, um, obviously being neurotic is going to help. I have to heal, I have to heal. And that's what you'll find with the Mel was, especially if you're doing competition obedience, uh, if you're doing bite work, you know, once they learn something, especially if you're smart enough to teach them that thing the right way, um, they generally are really good at repeating that behavior over and over again with not a lot of help required, right? Whereas, and by that I mean like you don't have to wa wave the ball in their face to get them to do it. Like my last competition dog, Bastion, and you, I'm sure you can, you, you've seen videos on him if you follow me, um, no longer with us, RIP Bastion, you crazy bastard. Um, but you know, he was like that. Like I could, when I went on the trial field, I didn't have to worry about building his drive. I literally would just say, uh, you know, foos and immediately perfect, perfect, uh, healing, like, like, you know, and uh, head up and tail up and, you know, and, and that wasn't, that wasn't due to like, you know, crazy special training that I did. That was just how he was because he had that neuroses that had been successfully attached to the behavior of focus healing. And you could apply that to anything. Unfortunately, you know, he had a bad foundation in tracking and, and my training at the time didn't help. And so he had issues with the tracking that were neurotic as well. Um, and, and that was an example of how, you know, the neuroses can, can be bad. So anyways, I, I think we kind of went off track a little bit, but suffice to say, Malwas are more intense and they're more sensitive. So they're less forgiving of training mistakes. So whether you're looking for your next police canine or you're looking for your next competition dog, you better know what you're doing if you're going to get a Malwas because I've seen them taught the wrong thing so many times, right? Um, by the way, those of you that are wondering why I'm just letting this go, I mean, this is puppies being puppies. It's a male and a female, and, and, and I don't mind if they do this stuff. There's a line, and if they cross it, I'll, I'll correct them. But, you know, you got to let them be, be dogs to some degree. Anyways, 
right. right? If you're planning on getting your next police canine or your um, or your, your your next competition dog, and you don't have a ton of experience, you know, just realize that you're going to be in for more 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 challenge with the Malwa, right? Now, if you know what you're doing, you know there are a lot of benefits to training a Malwa because you can turn them into just machines, right? You can turn them into like really super strong working dogs um, and, 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 and dogs that have just boundless amounts of drive and motor to work. Um, and, and you could definitely do that, but you can also really mess them up. So that's, that's the thing. And you see, that's why you see a lot of departments are like, no Malwas, right? Well, yeah, no Malwas because they don't have, you know, very good handlers and they don't have very good trainers that can put a good foundation on the dogs. And they're buying these dogs green. So they're already kind of like, you know, a year to 18 months old and there's no foundation on the dogs and you don't really know what you're doing. So you're taking this dog that's full of drive and has that, those neurotic tendencies and is sensitive. And now all of a sudden, hey, okay, no digging that grass. That's new grass, guys. Get away from it, right? And, and, and then you're going to, you know, do all the things that a lot of new and green handlers do. And then you're going to wonder why bad things happen. Well, of course. You know, even if, and I've seen a lot of like, good, hey, 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 that's enough. You're taking it too far. Hey. Unbelievable. That'll be enough. And that's what it is too, guys. When you got multiple dogs, there comes a time, hey, when you gotta lay down the law a little bit. All right, hey, that's enough. So, anyways, as I was saying, the Malwa is less forgiving of mistakes, but on the back end, if you know what you're doing and you're able to put a good foundation on the dog, the work that the dog puts out. Um, is is phenomenal, and that's why people love them. And also, they're really fast to train, and they're they're really smart. And once you get them pointed in the right direction, you know the the generally the payoff is huge. Um, you know the German Shepherd, more forgiving. Um, that means you can be a ham-handed handler. Uh, they're less likely to come up the leash at you. Um, you know if you don't know what you're doing and you make some mistakes, they're less sensitive, right? Um, but, you know, that they don't really have, like a lot of German Shepherds, especially the working ones, do have some neurotic tendencies, but it's not to the same degree as the Malwas, right? So, hey, 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 come on, we're not going to run on the driveway. Anyways, um, so the German Shepherd could be more forgiving. Now, personal preference wise, I've had powerful Malwas and I've had powerful German Shepherds and a good dog is a good dog. But for me, I like the German Shepherds more. I think they just have a little bit more stability. Um, that being said, I always will have a Malwar three here, um, because you know, I like the breed and the best way to kind of describe them is, you know, the, the Dodge Viper, you know, that, that, that supercar has a lot of, for those of you kind of into cars, like that car has a lot of a reputation behind it of being a very dangerous car to drive. And that's because the, the car is uber responsive, right? Like, if you don't know what you're doing, if you make the slightest mistake, the car will over-respond to, to the controls, right? And, and you'll end up spinning out or, or crashing or whatever. The Malwa was the exact same thing. They're uber-responsive to pressure, uh, to reward, to, to everything. They're uber-responsive to stimulus. So, needless to say, you can end up getting bit. Um, you know, you could end up teaching the wrong thing. You could end up giving the dog, you know, um, you know, an, an irrational fear of something, um, or an irrational desire to do something. If you don't know what you're doing again, the German shepherd's a little bit more stable, a little bit more balanced. Now, ironically there's, well, not ironically, but the, the German shepherd in this pairing here has more drive than the Malwa, right? He actually has more natural drive than the Malwa, but she still has that neurosis. She's more neurotic than he is, right? So it's 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 an interesting thing. And 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 that's not uncommon to see, hey, Gage, she's done with that. So don't do it anymore. <laughs> there comes a time, you know, when they're wrestling that they've had enough. And that's the mistake a lot of people make. Like these are a male and a female, so I kinda I, I'm not so worried about it. But you know, people will allow it to go and go and, and they got two young males or two young females and then they wonder why the dogs get to two years of age and they start really fighting. I'm not worried that they're really going to fight. Like he, when 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 she gets older, she'll probably just 
kind of push him around and he'll take it. I, I can't tell you the amount of times I've seen males kind of take, take, take a beating willingly <laughs> from a, from a small female and, and especially the kind of male that would never take that from a male. Like every male I've had has been like that. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, that being said, as they're puppies now, I, I will, like I said, put, draw a line in the sand. So anyways, from a working perspective, um, give me a good quality German Shepherd. That being said, there's a lot of German Shepherds that have drive and intensity issues, and they lack sustained drive. And sustained drive is not just what will he do right now, it's what will he do for the hope of something in the future. And if you train a Malinois, you realize that it's a lot faster for them to develop that belief that there may be a reward down the road and they're a lot willing to they're willing to work a lot harder for a lot longer generally for that reward whereas the german shepherd he's kind of like you know if you don't build that into him properly a lot of the time um you know you'll have sustained drive issues where the dog kind of goes out of drive a little bit and maybe you know has a bit more he's a little bit slower to get there and um, you know, they're less, a little bit less responsive to the, to the commands. Now, again, I want you to keep in mind, this is all generalities. There are individuals within the breed that are exceptions to these general rules. And I've seen a lot of them. So don't tell me about yours that isn't like that and whatever else. It's, it's not important. I'm giving generality so people can make an informed decision. So do Malinois make good house pets? Hell no. Okay, not unless you know what you're doing or not unless you get a professionally trained dog by someone that knows what they're doing and is selecting a dog. Like I've sold Malwas to people that are really good house pets. Um, you know, I've sold Malwas to people that, that, that are fantastic house pets um, because that dog is an exception to the general rule of the breed. Um, and they're not represent a good representation of the breed, but that individual has those specific traits that make them a good house pet. Um, you know, and, and, and by house pet, I still mean, you know, like it's an active dog, but the dog can exist with, with people that maybe aren't so, uh, what's the word familiar with what a dog like that needs. And, and they can make mistakes with the dog and the dog is forgiving of mistakes. Whereas a lot of Malwas are not, um, the other thing with Malwas is be careful. Ever since they've started appearing in a lot of movies and pictures, you see a lot of them now. And to be quite frank, uh, most people that breed them have no freaking clue what they're doing. And they're breeding nervy, fear aggressive, um, you know, uh, anxious dogs that are just messes. And it's not something that you would ever want to live with. Um, it's useless for work um, and it's useless for life. So, you know, that's, that's not something I'd want. Now, the German Shepherds. It's the same thing, you know, people are like, oh, I got a German Shepherd. He can do this, that, and everything else. And apparently his father was a police canine and all sorts of nonsense, right? Um, and, uh, you know, the German Shepherds have just as many bad breeders producing them. So, you know, these, these, both these dogs are, are good, um, you know, reflections of, of, of their breed. Um, you know, the Malwa, maybe she's a little bit, uh, not as doesn't bring as much to the table maybe as 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 I would like her to bring from a work perspective but she's a work in progress and part of the challenge um for me as a trainer um is building dogs come on guys come on it's building dogs so we're gonna see how far I can build her I want to build her past her natural genetic proclivities whereas the male shepherd over there he's gonna be you know as long as his hips and his elbows check he's gonna be a monster and by check I mean I need them to be, uh, you know, like really clean in order for me to keep and compete with that dog. But he's going to be probably my next competition dog. So anyways, that's a little blurb on Belgian Malwas and German Shepherds. Um, general rules of thumb. Um, if you're new to the working dog world, get yourself a nice German Shepherd. If you're not new and you have some clue as to what you're doing, get a Malwas. If you are an inexperienced person and you still want to get a Malwas, get a female. They're a lot more safe, let's say, in terms of, you know, if you screw up, <laughs> if you screw up, you know, the females are, are very soft and, 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 and they generally are pretty uh, sensitive dogs. So you're not going to have much in the way of handler aggression from a female. Uh, I think, I think I kind of broadly covered this topic. There's more to it as with everything. There's an enormous amount of complexity and nuance, um, but I think I covered everything.